10 predictions for the next 10 years of the flow arts. You heard me right. I've been spinning Poi now for around 13 to 14 years and I've seen a lot of changes come and go in that time. So I'm going to attempt that most guaranteed of ventures to fail. I'm going to try and make some predictions. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of Poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today I'm reading the tea leaves, gazing into my crystal ball and making some guesses as to what you can expect from the next decade of the flow arts. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow DNA, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And a special thanks to the first non-business friend of the channel, Johnny Howard. Thanks so much for your support, Johnny. So about a month ago, I released a rather controversial video on why Home of Poi was shutting down and or looking for a buyer. I didn't have any inside information on the status of the company, and as it turns out, that meant that I got some things about the health of the company wrong. But the video was really less about Home of Poi and more about the ways in which the flow arts industry has changed and evolved here in the United States in the past decade and a half. And being as how I did so well on that project, sarcasm, I figured why not go full tilt and make some predictions on what will happen in the next decade of the flow arts. There are plenty of trends currently at work in the flow arts, so how about extrapolating them and seeing where they might lead? I will, however, need to include a few caveats before we start. First, even though it was implied in that Home of Poi video, I never said explicitly that it was coming primarily through an American lens. And I should have. Likewise, you'll see that quite a lot of this video centers around the evolution of flow arts for the next decade from an American perspective. Second, making predictions about the future has several problems associated with it. First up, there's the fact that current trends can end or alter radically in the next few years, to say nothing of how often they reflect the bias of the person making those predictions. To this end, this list is ordered according to certainty, and I'll be sharing with you why I'm making each prediction. Hopefully in that way, if I have a bias that is coming through, it'll be easy to spot where. Editor's note from the future, this video went long, so it's going to be broken up into two different parts, predictions 10 through 6 in this video and predictions 5 through 1 in another week. Please tune in for both. And so with that, let's start with my first prediction. This is one that I can just about guarantee will come true. Prediction number 10, flow arts will still exist. Okay, so this is kind of a gimme, but let me share why I think it's necessary to share it anyway. I think whenever a new art form or approach to an art form appears, there's a certain degree to which people looking at it will wonder whether it's a fad or whether it has staying power. To the best of my knowledge, whether you call it fire spinning, object manipulation, or flow arts, the practice of spinning a prop for personal growth, meditation, and achievement is one that has lasted for at least the past 20 years, so I have no reason to doubt that it'll be here in another 10. Will people doing it call it flow arts? That's a bit harder to predict. I'd say probably so, given the current popularity of the term, but with the caveat that these things can change very unexpectedly. Prediction number nine, Facebook will decline in influence. Last year during the protests, I met a lot of young people and I was really struck by something about them, you know, aside from how passionate they were about the cause that they were working on. And that's that none of them under the age of 30 had Facebook accounts. Several years ago, Facebook plateaued in adding active users here in the United States and switched over to focusing on spreading its reach abroad. But that's also meant that an entire generation of social media savvy kids have come of age without it being the center of their online lives. It won't surprise me if we see Facebook's active users plateau and decline in the coming decade as younger people switch over to using other platforms for their online engagement or simply never start up on Facebook at all. To say nothing of the fact that there's a non-zero chance that in the next decade, antitrust litigation will split up the company anyway. What does that have to do with the flow arts? Well, Facebook groups are currently the dominant means by which artists all across the world come together to share content and have conversations about spinning. I think we're currently living in the peak of the influence of these Facebook groups and the decline in that influence will likely start in the next few years. Bear in mind, I am not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. It is merely a thing that I'm pretty sure is going to happen. Prediction number eight, fire festivals will all but disappear in the United States. Ten years ago, there was one point in which there were 50 flow festivals here in the United States in a single calendar year, but there was one huge problem. You'd see the exact same people at every event. It wasn't that most of these events were supporting thriving populations of local flow artists, so much as there was a culture of people attending multiple events a year and driving from event to event to hang out and keep the party going. A lot of these events were not being run in a terribly efficient fashion either. The result? We had a bubble. 
and it bursts. As people aged out and moved on from spinning, had kids, or even just got tired of living on the road for most of the year. Now we're down to closer to a dozen of these events, and most of them do not turn a profit. But it gets worse. I spent several years working at Flame Festival here in the United States and spent a lot of that time collecting statistics about the event. And attendance there grew sharply in the mid-2010s only to plateau by the later part of the decade. It seemed like it was hard to grow these events past around five to 600 attendees, and it was hard to run an event that small and make much money off of it. With one or two exceptions, every festival organizer I've talked to tells the same story. Attendance has plateaued or declined, and COVID certainly hasn't helped. At this rate, I think we're going to wind up back where we were in the early 2000s, with a small handful of festivals continuing to cater to the diehards who keep the events alive out of nostalgia, but their place of importance in flow arts culture will become a thing of the past. Prediction number seven. Fire spending will become specialized to a small select few here in the United States. So every once in a while, there's a discussion on one of the online groups about why Americans are so obsessed with white gas. And there's a host of reasons related to the properties of the fuel itself why this is true. But the biggest one, honestly, is the ease with which it can be acquired here. I didn't realize until I traveled abroad to Kenya about a decade ago that kerosene is actually super common in many other countries. It's usually widely available at gas stations. It's not nearly as easy to acquire here in the United States. White gas can be found at most camping stores, sporting goods stores, and even many hardware stores, whereas kerosene is a little more specialized in niche, typically only appearing in a few specific big box stores and lamp oil only available at hobby stores. But this won't always be the case. The United States right now is trying real hard to switch over to an infrastructure based around electric vehicles, and several automakers have pledged to switch over to manufacturing only electric cars in the coming decade. That means that much of the infrastructure built around fossil fuels here is going to change dramatically. The upshot of that is once fuel gets hard enough to find, people will simply stop spending fire, except during the most special of occasions. You'll probably still see dedicated professional performers doing it, but casual fire spin jams? Those will likely disappear. Now's the time to buy stock in LED props. Prediction number six, Russia will eclipse the United States as the leader and center of flow arts in the world. So straight up, the Russians have been killing us for years, not only developing a style unique to the country that is so clean and beautiful to watch that it's rapidly becoming the dominant style worldwide. They've also taken the initiative in putting together amazing festivals, competitions, and building an incredible community. Have you seen the video feeds from Poikon, the online tutorials from Katya Stakhanova and Mel, the awesome challenges this community engages in all the time? I'm telling you, they've got their act together in a way that I think is really going to make them the center of poi knowledge and culture in the coming decade. Keep an eye out. And I, for one, welcome our new Russian overlords. Dabro pajavola, tavarishi. Yeah, my Russian's gonna need a little bit of work there. You know what? There was so much ground to cover in these predictions that I couldn't squeeze them all into just one video. Tune back in next week when I share predictions one through five with you. And believe me, some of them are gonna get a little out there. Agree with me? Disagree with me? Keep the conversation rolling. Please leave a comment with your thoughts and please make sure to share and subscribe to help other people find this video and to help my channel grow. Real quick, I just wanted to throw out a huge thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind contributions of these wonderful people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. Do you like POI content? Do you like tutorials, flow sessions, and vlogs on flow arts culture? Consider signing up to support my work. I want to bring flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their brains and their bodies through prop spinning. So help me do it. Head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. Not only will you be supporting this mission, but you'll also be able to get early access to all of my content, a vote in what content I produce in the future, and a host of other awesome rewards, such as getting a special weekly POI lesson delivered to your inbox that is only only available to my supporters. Go give that a look and please consider supporting this channel. Thank you in advance. Are there any predictions you have or things that you're hoping I'll address in my next installment? I'd love to know. Leave me a comment with your thoughts and let's see how your predictions line up with my own. I'll leave a link to a playlist of some of my other vlogs down in the description as well as up on screen if you happen to be watching this video on YouTube. Please make sure to get out and flow today and I will see you with a new video on Wednesday. Peace.